This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The song said, I know that you are for me. I know that you will never forsake me in my weakness. No matter what you're going through, remind yourself, tell yourself that God is for me. And according to Romans 8 and 31, if God be for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't matter what's against you. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a beautiful song, Dina. All right. Well, when you're ready, say ready. I want to speak a blessing over you and your family. My wife says good morning. Good morning. I want to speak a blessing over you and your family. When you're ready, say ready. Ready. Evangelist Brian is ready. Mona Lisa is ready. Good. Regina is ready. Good. Sam is ready. Good. Aisha, good morning. Evangelist Brian. Good morning. Aisha is ready. Good. Dina is ready. Good. Good morning, Evangelist Regina. Sis, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Lenore is ready. Rosa is ready. Ruth is ready. The Holy Spirit is ready. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're glad to be alive, tap that screen. If you're glad to be alive, tap that screen this morning. Come on, tap that screen this morning if you're glad to be alive. Hallelujah. If you know that he is for you, tap that screen. Hallelujah. I believe and I receive. I believe that he will keep me. I believe he has blessed me. I believe and I receive it in the name of Jesus. All right, do me a favor. Put down the number 15, please. Put down the number 15. Today is June 15th. We are halfway through the month. We are halfway through the fast. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for what he's doing? Can we give God praise for what he's doing? I don't think some of you realize what is going on, that God is honoring our sacrifice. God is honoring our sacrifice. God is honoring our time with him. He told us a while ago, set your face to seek me. Before any of the protests was going on, before the virus was going on, God said, set your face to seek me. He knew all of these things would be going on at one time. And he said, Michael, call the people and set yourself to seek me. I want you to fast. I want you to pray. I want you to give. Okay. And we are believing for five things. Number one, for the bands of wickedness to be undone. How many of you know that is happening? That is happening. Congress, mayors, are passing legislations in a day. They're doing it in a day. Mm. Things that were wicked, laws that were wicked, they are changing it in a day. They are changing it in a day. Good morning, Shireen. Blessings to you and your husband. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Come on, I, I need you to see what is going on. That's what we're believing God for. 
bands of wickedness to be undone. It is happening. Legislation is being passed in a day. They have uh, so many police departments around the country have gotten rid of the chokehold. Uh, flags are coming down. Statues are coming down. Things that were honoring people who own slaves, all of that stuff is coming down within a day, within a week. People have uh, marched for years. People have cried out for years. But this stuff is coming down in days. That is supernatural. That's bigger than a movement. That is bigger than a march. That's bigger than a protest. That is God undoing the bands of wickedness. You haven't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. Can we give him praise? If you understand this is a God thing, if you understand this is a God thing, all we got to do is set ourselves to seek him. All we got to do is repent. And God said he would heal the land. My God, he said he would heal the land. God told us to stay in the spirit. That's what we're going to do. God told us to stay in the spirit. That's what we're doing. We're staying in the spirit. We're fighting this battle in the spirit. This is how we fight our battle. Good morning, Kiana. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. This is how we fight the battle. Hallelujah. So we are halfway and we are seeing God move. Number one, we are believing for God to undo bands of wickedness. It is happening. How many of you realize this is happening? If you realize this is happening, somebody say amen. amen. Come on. Things are being uprooted because it is in the system. It's not just people. It is in systems. It is in every system of this world. Wickedness. It's in every system. Wickedness. It's happening. I'm talking about in days. In days. In days. That just lets you know what God is able to do in a day. Some of you, you need to uh, hold your head up just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Just think of all the people who died, all the people who died wanting to see these things, and now it's being done in a day. Lord have mercy. That's the power of God. Good morning, D. Arthur. Blessings to you and your wife and family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. So I want you to realize that this consecration is not in vain. Okay, we've been seeking uh, and setting ourselves to seek God. And number one, we've been fasting, praying, and giving. And our expectation is the Lord said, I will begin to undo bands of wickedness. We're seeing it. We're seeing it happen. We're seeing it happen. We're seeing a NASCAR. NASCAR, which always was connected to the Confederate flag, disavowed the flag. And that, this is huge. This is huge. That's a big corporation. That's a big corporation. But things are happening in a day. Legislation is being passed in a day to undo the bands of wickedness. My God. I want you to see when you do a fast that God has called, God is obligated to do what he said. All systems of being, all systems of wickedness must be undone. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Hallelujah. Number two, we are praying for heavy burdens to be lifted. Heavy burdens to be lifted. It's happening. It's happening. Number three, we are praying for the oppressed to go free. My God, you know that we work in the prison system. People are being released from prison supernaturally. 
People are being released from prison supernaturally. People are getting their voting rights back supernaturally. This has never happened. I need you to see what's going on. God is honoring his word. God is honoring his word. The people are being released from prison and getting their rights back to vote. This was taken away from them, but is they're, they're being restored in a day, in a day. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. We have been speaking this for years and thanking God for it. Number four, we believe in God for yokes to be destroyed. Yokes are being destroyed. Yokes are being destroyed. You're seeing people come together, band together like never before. People who are fighting against each other mm -hmm. are coming together. People are not looking at race. They're looking at the human race. People are coming together. Something good is coming out of all these things. Early on, if you remember the word of the Lord uh, that God told me to speak, what was meant to harm you, I'm going to turn it to bless you. How many of you remember that? The Lord said, Michael, tell the people what was meant to harm you, I'm going to make it bless you. There are things happening. God is going to use it to bless you. You remember that good, Kiana? And lastly, whatever is plaguing you must stop. When David sold, you remember that, Lenore? Good. When David sold that seed, the burnt offering, the peace offering, the Lord entreated for the land and the plague was stayed. We're believing God that before it's all over, Whatever has been plaguing you must stop. And I need you not to pray in supplication. I need you not to pray in a request. I need you to be doing a prayer of thanksgiving. For these last 15 days, I want you to do a prayer of thanksgiving every day. Lord, we thank you for undoing the bands of wickedness. Lord, we thank you that the oppressed is going free. Lord, we thank you that heavy burdens are being lifted. Lord, we thank you that yokes are being destroyed. Lord, we thank you that whatever is plaguing us must stop for the next 15 days. I don't want you to be making a request. I don't want you to be praying for some. I want you to change it to a prayer of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. A prayer of thanksgiving. Don't pray for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Tap that screen if you received that word thus far. That, my God, if you realize what's going on, You would be shouting. You would be shouting. You would be shouting. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This morning, we want to pray for our sister, Renee. We want to pray for her mom. So let's pause right now, and let's pray for her mom. Father, we thank you for Renee and her mother. Father, we intercede on uh, Renee's mother's behalf this morning. We send a word of healing, wholeness, yes. and health. We speak strength to Renee's mother this morning. Let your presence overshadow her. Let your power overshadow her. Let your peace guard her heart and mind. We thank you for a speedy and a full recovery. We thank you right now for what you are doing in her life. We thank you for the testimony that shall come in the name of Jesus, it is so, and so it is, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
All right, let's get into the word uh, this morning. I just wanted to share that with you concerning the consecration, okay? Concerning the consecration, I want you to see what God is doing. Sometimes we can miss what God is doing because we're looking at our own life. We're looking at our own life and we think nothing is happening in our own life, but God is bigger than you. God doesn't do something just for you. He does it for us all. And what he does, he does things around us to see how we're going to respond. And when we respond right, because guess what? I don't have to worry about my things because God already got that. That's a done deal. But I can rejoice with other people. I can rejoice in what he's doing all over the land. But you've got to be aware. Thank you. You've got to be aware of what the Lord is doing in the midst of his people. Thank you. Good. Thank you all for praying and agreeing with me and prayer for Renair and her mom. Thank you. All right. Some of you have asked uh, concerning the bountiful seed. Uh, once again, as the Lord gives you, as he tells you what to do, you can give it. We're going to give it before the end of June. It's up to you. You can give it now or you can give it uh, before the end of June. It's up to you. There's some people that was asking, when do we get? You can. There are people that's been given something every day. OK, so however the Lord leads you to do it. But we're going to uh, we're going to sow a bountiful seed before this month is out. We're going to sow a bountiful seed before this month is out. So you allow the Lord to tell you what to do, what to give. All right, let's go. How many of you were on yesterday? We had a powerful time Sunday morning and Sunday night. Come on, put up there Luke 13. Let's go back there. Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. Luke, there you go. I was good. 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 Thank you for joining us yesterday, Mona Lisa. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Rosa, Lenore. Luke 13 and 10. Thank you, Regina. Good. All right. Those of you, those of you who were on, those of you who watch the lessons from yesterday morning and night, I want you to share with us something you learned something you learned, something you got out of the lesson yesterday. I want you to share with us something you got out of the lesson, whether it was Sunday morning or Sunday night. I want you to share with us this morning something you received from the lesson Sunday morning or Sunday night. I want you to share with us something you received from the lesson Sunday morning or Sunday night. Something you received from the lesson, Sunday morning or Sunday night. No matter what happens, we should still expect. Good, Mona Lisa. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Even though this lady was going through for 18 years, she was still expecting a miracle. And miracles happen when you hold on to your expectation. Expectation is the breeding ground of miracles. And just because it has not happened doesn't mean it cannot happen or it will not. Good, Sam. The church is the place of empowerment. Good. And transformation. The church is a place of transformation. It is a place where you come to encounter God. Come on. You don't come there to be a part of a club. You don't come there to be a part of an organization. You don't come there to be a member. You come to church to encounter God. My, it is the place of transformation. Still believing God for her miracle. Good, Dina. Good. Anyone else?
All right, let's read our story this morning and let's see what else the Lord will give us. We can often make accommodations for spirits to dwell. Good, good, Mona Lisa. That was powerful, yes. This lady had been going through so long that she began to adjust her life to accommodate the spirit. And the spirit took over her life. You need to not give place to spirits. The spirit took over her life. Don't accommodate for spirits to come into your life. Good. That was good. Anyone else? Luke 13 and 10. Yes. Good. Good. Excellent. And, and, and you know that some people have done that because how they talk, how they talk to other people. Sometimes a spirit will make you where you want to be by yourself. And, and you'll say, that's the way I am, but it's not you. It, it's the spirit uh, dislocating you from other people. Because he knows that if he can separate you from other people, he can destroy you because you'll be by yourself. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for participating. Luke 13 and 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. Write this down. Everyone will not be happy about your breakthrough. Everyone will not be happy, Lenore, about your freedom. Everyone will not want you to walk in freedom, Rosa. My God, this man was upset at what Jesus did for this woman. My God, he did not see that this woman had been suffering for 18 years. And instead of rejoicing, Regina, he was upset. Instead of rejoicing, Shireen, he was upset. So don't look for everybody to be happy, Sam, for what God is doing for you. Don't look for everyone to be happy for you, Ruth because of what God is doing, there will be people even in the church that will not be happy for what God is doing for you. This man was upset because Jesus disrupted his program. This man was upset because Jesus disrupted his program. He didn't get a chance to speak. Jesus cut into the service and he disrupted it and he demonstrated his power. And I don't know about you, but God needs to disrupt a lot of our services. He needs to come in and do what he needs to do because a lot of things we do are routine. A lot of things we do are rituals. And it's not helping anyone. This man was upset. Watch this. And he said, you need to come on the right day. Jesus said to him, thou hypocrite, do not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering. Okay. This is what I want to talk about today. Verse 16. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham. Write that down. Daughter of Abraham. Let's deal with that today. Daughter of Abraham. Come on. This woman being a daughter of Abraham. 
Okay. I need you to shift from a religious mindset to a kingdom mindset. I need you to shift from a religious mindset to a kingdom mindset. Okay, write that down, those two words, religious and kingdom. Religious kingdom. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Religious kingdom. You've got to move from a religious mindset, the author, Kiana, to a kingdom mentality. Glory, Felicia. Move from the religious mindset to a kingdom mentality. As a religious person, Lenore, she was a member of a church. As a religious person, Ruth, Rosa, she was a member of a church. But as a kingdom citizen, she had rights and privileges. Write that down. As a kingdom citizen, Regina, you have rights and privileges. As a kingdom citizen, Chaplain Pope, you have rights and privileges. As a kingdom citizen, Evangelist Bryant, we have rights and privileges. This is more than just being a member of a church, Kiana. We have rights and privileges. Privileges and rights in a kingdom comes through citizenship. Privileges and rights in a kingdom, Rosa, comes through citizenship. When you are a citizen of a place, privileges and rights come with that. Lord have mercy. There you go. Good. Mona Lisa, she had a right to be healed. She had a right to be healed. See, that's what kingdom says. Kingdom says you have a right to be healed because you are under a covenant. You have a right to be healed because you have a covenant. Lord have mercy. You have a covenant with God and God is a covenant keeper. Healing is a part of the covenant. Good morning, Tasha. The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on, somebody write that down. I am a covenant person. Healing is a part of the covenant. Joy is a part of the covenant. Peace is a part of the covenant. Prosperity is a part of the covenant. A sound mind is a part of the covenant. Your children being blessed is a part of the covenant. Good, Shireen. You are a covenant person. You've got to move from what is convenient, Aisha, to what is covenant. You've got to move from what is convenient to what is covenant. Get my God. We must walk in covenant. That's when you are talking kingdom. As long as you have a religious mentality, all you're concerned with is going to church. This thing is bigger than you going to church. This thing is bigger than you being an usher. This thing is bigger than you being on the choir. My God, this woman was a kingdom citizen for 18 years as a member. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. She just kept showing up. And instead of getting better, she got worse. And guess what? Nobody in the congregation cared that she was in the same situation. But when the kingdom shows up, things must change. Write that down. When the kingdom shows up, things must change. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving this morning. Tap that screen if you're receiving, if you're ready to change, if you're ready to shift from a religious mindset to a kingdom mentality, if you're ready to shift from a religious mindset to a kingdom mentality, you are not a member of a church. You are a citizen 
of a kingdom. Lord have mercy. You are a citizen of a kingdom. There you go, Sam. When the kingdom shows up, things must change. Thank you, Aisha. Good morning, Anthony. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bless you, man of God. We miss you. Good to have you on. Blessings to you and your family. We're in Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Come on. Good. There you go, Regina. I am a kingdom citizen. Come on, somebody make that declaration. I am a kingdom citizen. Good. Come on. Make it. I am a kingdom citizen. When you say that, my God, you know what you're saying? When you say that you are a kingdom citizen, you are saying that the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. When you say that you are a kingdom citizen, you are saying two things. Watch this. Good, Tasha. Good, Anthony. When you say, I am a kingdom citizen, Rosa, you are saying two things. You are saying good, Aisha. You are, s good morning, Tara. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning, Tara. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Come on. We're in Luke chapter 13. Good Lenore. Good Rosa. Good Sam. Come on. As you come on, Tara, begin to declare, I am a kingdom citizen. Come on. You are not a church member. You are a kingdom citizen. And when you say, I am a kingdom citizen, you are saying two things. Number one, you are saying, Lenore, that the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. Come on. Somebody write that down. My God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. The king is responsible for your welfare and well-being, Sam, Shireen, the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. My God, hallelujah. When you say you are a kingdom citizen, that's what you're saying. Because the king has king kingdom. That means a king over a domain. Lord have mercy. Kingdom. It's two words. A king over a domain, a king over a territory. He is responsible for everything in his territory. My God. Number one, you are saying that the king is responsible for your well-being and your welfare. Number two, when you say you are a kingdom citizen, number two, this is what you're saying. You're saying that you have submitted your life under the king. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Did you get that? Aisha, Rosa, Lenore, Ruth, when you say, I am a kingdom citizen, number two, you are saying you have submitted your life under the king. Kiana, you have submitted your life to the king. Good, Dina. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good, Tasha. Good, Regina. Good. Number three, Lord have mercy. Number one, good, Tara. When you say you are a kingdom citizen, number one, you are saying the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. Number two, when you say that you are a kingdom citizen, you are saying that you have submitted your life under the king. And number three, Sam, when you say that you are a kingdom citizen, you are saying you have accepted God's way of doing things. My God, I'm about to run a lap. I'm about to take a lap. Number three, 
Lenore, when you say you are a kingdom citizen, you have accepted God's way of doing things. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. You, my God, some of you, we're going to have to go over the kingdom again so you understand. That's why I'm excited. That's why I'm excited because I understand how a kingdom works. Some of you don't understand how a kingdom works. You've been under a democracy so long that you're used to people promising you something and not coming through. And you're used to keep voting for people who don't have your best interests. So you've been under a president. You don't know what it is to be under a king. But I want you to know that you are a kingdom citizen. And in the kingdom, you have rights. In the kingdom, you have privileges. Hallelujah. My God. Lord, have mercy. You taught about this before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, this is a message we have to keep teaching because you are living in a democracy. And a democracy is totally opposite to a kingdom. A democracy is totally opposite to a kingdom. Hallelujah. A democracy is totally opposite to a kingdom. So it's hard to understand the kingdom when you're living under a president and not under a king. That's why Jesus said you're in this world, but you're not of this world. I don't look to the world for my provision because I'm connected to a different government. I'm connected to a greater source. I'm connected to a king. Hallelujah. My God, I feel like lifting him up. Yes, Lord. Come on. If you understand what I'm saying, tap that screen. I need to see all of those hearts this morning. I need to see everybody's heart this morning. Come on, hallelujah. You are a kingdom citizen. You're dealing with a king. He said all of his promises to you are yea and amen. My God, he's not playing games with you. What he said, he will do what he spoke. He will bring it to pass in the next 15 days. We are expecting God to continue to do supernatural things. My God, some of you don't understand. These things have been done in a day. Things that were never uh, done for years. God undoing bands of wickedness, past legislation in a day. My God. God, when people were fighting it for years, now it's passed in a day. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Things that were monuments standing for years came down in a day, came down in hours. Lord, have mercy. That should excite you. Because God said, I'm undoing the bands of wickedness. And everything that's tried to hold you back has to let you go. And things that are due to you, it's on its way. My God, things that are due to you are on its way. Things that have been held up for years are about to be manifested. I just woke all the way up. Hey, glory. My God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God said, when you set yourself to seek me, expect five things. When you set yourself to seek me, I will undo the bands of wickedness. If you only knew what was going on in this world. That's why the Bible said, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You wrestle against principalities and powers of darkness, rulers, and high places. God is bringing down the high places. God is bringing down the high places. Come on, somebody declare that. God is bringing down the high places. All in the Old Testament, when the kings went in, 
They went into the high places and they began to bring down the idols in the high places. God is going into the high places and bringing it down. God is going into governments. God is going into systems and he's bringing them down. And the kingdoms of this world shall be the come the kingdoms of our God. That's why you got to stay in the spirit. This is no fight in the flesh. You've got to stay in the spirit. My God, I love you, Father. My God, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Let Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's bringing down the high places. He's bringing down principalities. He's bringing down rulers of darkness. There is no power greater than him. The Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality. Do you hear me? You serve someone who is seated high above all principality. Jesus is calling the shots. Write that down in capital letter. Jesus is calling the shots. Congress is not calling the shots. The president is not calling the shots. The Senate is not calling the shots. People are not calling the shot. Jesus is calling the shot. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all rulers of darkness, far above all principal. Everything is under him. Everything is under his feet. My God, I love you. My God. You have no need to worry. You have no need to worry. You have no need to fear. When you see these things happening, you should be rejoicing. Why? Because, hallelujah, he is avenging his people, and he's doing it speedily. He's doing it speedily. Hallelujah. My God, I love you. So you've got to shift from a religious mindset to a kingdom mindset. As in a religious mindset, Tasha, she was just a member of a church. But in the kingdom, she was a citizen of a kingdom. In the church setting, it was okay for her to be bound. But in the kingdom, it was her right to be healed. Lord have mercy. Religion, write this down, capital letters, religion does not give you power to overcome your circumstances. Thank you for that bomb. That was a bomb. That was a bomb. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Come on. Write this down. Religion does not give you power to overcome circumstances. Jesus did not come to bring us a religion. He came to bring the kingdom. He didn't come to bring a religion, Regina, because religion does not give you power to overcome your circumstances. That's what the kingdom does. The kingdom gives you power to overcome your circumstances. My God. The Bible said unto us, a son is born. And the government, unto us, excuse me, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders, Tara. He was bringing a government called the kingdom of God. Come on. Religion does not give you power to overcome circumstance. Why do you think Jesus, people ran to Jesus? Because when they encountered him, Sam, he gave them power over their circumstances. The man at the pool had no power over his circumstance because he was trusting in a religious system. But when he encountered Jesus, Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And when the kingdom showed up, everything changed. Lord have mercy. That's powerful. 
All right, let's go. Let's go. Let me take you back. Come on. Thank you for those bombs. Tap that screen. Watch this. He says, ought not this woman. Watch this. You ready? Verse 16. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. He was telling them it was her right to be healed. It is your right to be healed because of what Jesus did on the cross. Father, we thank you for the seed that was sown this morning by Valerie and according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11, you said in your word, you would bless us a thousand times more in Jesus' name. Come on. It was her right to be healed. He said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? My God, go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us this morning. Come on. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for putting it together. Come on. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, put it together. Come on. Holy Spirit, put it together. Watch this, Lenore. Watch this, Anthony. Holy Spirit, connect the dots. Connect the dots. What did he mean? She was a daughter of Abraham. Number one, covenant. Number one, covenant. A daughter of Abraham spoke to her covenant. My God. Spoke to her covenant. Watch this. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 13. Galatians 3, in 13, you should have that highlighted. We've been over this before, but if you don't have it highlighted, highlight it now. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made a curse for us. He became a curse so you wouldn't have to live under a curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made a curse, Lord have mercy, for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So as he was being crucified on the tree, he became a curse so you and I would not have to live under the curse. Can you thank him for being made a curse. Can you thank him for that? Can you thank him for being made a curse so you don't have to live under a curse? Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. There is so much meat on that bone. There's so much meat when you understand. That's why no matter what Jesus went through, Anthony, the author, Shireen, Kiana, Kadia, Felicia, no matter what he went through, Rosa, Lenore, Ruth, Evangelist Bryant, Chaplain Pope, no matter what he went through, Tasha, the author, no matter what he went through, Michael, he couldn't die until he got on the tree. Lord, have mercy. he had to get on the tree. Why? Because it was prophesied, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. This was designed. He became a curse so you and I would not have to live under the curse, Tara. You don't have to live under a curse. You live under the blessing. Watch this. He became a curse, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Come on, come on. My God, he took the curse. He became a curse so you wouldn't have to live under. Well, if I'm not living under, there you go, Mona Lisa. I'm living under the blessing. Come on. I'm living under the blessing. Come on, declare it. 
I am living under the blessing. I'm not talking about a generational curse. I'm talking about generational blessings. Not only am I living under it, my children are living under it. Their children are living under it. Their children are living under it. My God, on and on. My God, do you hear the Holy Ghost? You are living under the blessing. He became a curse that the blessings would come upon you. The blessings would come upon you. Lord, have mercy. All my life in church, pretty much, I heard so much about a generational curse. Nobody ever told me about a generational blessing. And the Lord took me to the scripture. He said, Michael, you used to be under a generational curse. But now, because of your connection to Christ, because of your covenant with Christ, you are under a generational blessing. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Lord, have mercy. I know I'm not the only one who heard that in church. They, they love to tell you about you were under a curse, especially if you went to a revival. People love to tell you about a generational curse. I see a generation, all this stuff. But we have to tell the people, yeah, at one time you were under a curse. But now that you are saved, you are now under a generational blessing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In whom God has blessed, no man can curse. Lord, I love it. Whom God has blessed, no man can curse. If you believe that, tap that screen. Let me see those hearts. I said, whom God has blessed, Rosa, no man can curse. No devil in hell can curse you when God has blessed you. My God. My God. Did you hear me, Tara? Because God has blessed you, no man can curse you. No demon, no devil can curse you. Whom God has blessed, Anthony, no man can curse. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I thank you. I, Lord, have mercy. It don't matter who don't like it. You are blessed. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it. You are blessed. Hallelujah. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. You are blessed when you rise. You are blessed when you sit. You are blessed when you come. You are blessed when you go. You are blessed in your weeping. You are blessed in your rejoicing. In the morning, you are blessed. In the evening, you are blessed. Hallelujah to God. Lord have mercy. All right. Let, let me calm down. Lord have mercy. Mando Korabashe. Yes, Lord. I receive. I receive. My God. My God. Did you see that? Tara, he became a curse that the blessing of Abraham might be upon the Gentiles. You, I, we are the Gentiles, Regina. Shireen, we are the Gentiles. Evangelist Bryant, we are the Gentiles. Felicia, we are the Gentiles. Dina, my God. Father, we thank you for the seed sown by Anthony this morning. And according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11, I pray that you bless him a thousand times more in Jesus' name. My God. Come on. Write this down. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Lord, have mercy. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Cash app. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Come on, write it down. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Come on. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Come on. Thank you, Mona Lisa. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Yes, come on. The blessing. Yeah, she just put it up, Sam. Thank you. Dollar sign favor with. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Come on. The blessing of Abraham is upon me. Come on. The blessing 
of Abraham is upon me. Lord, have mercy. That's good news. That's good news. The ble Not the blessings, the blessing. Good God in my my God, the Bible said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Not many. All you need is one blessing. Lord, huh? did you hear me? I don't care how long you've been struggling. All God has to do is pour you out a blessing. And when that blessing comes upon you, Lenore, your life will never be the same again. Lord, have mercy. Did you see that? The blessing of Abraham is upon you. Lord, have mercy. Father, we thank you for Sam. We thank you for the seed he has sown. And according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11, we thank you that you will bless him a thousand times more in Jesus' name. The blessing. All you need is one. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm telling you, some of you don't realize. You got to study history. Some of the things that are taking place now, People never wanted those things to take place. Mm -hmm. This systematic stuff, people never wanted this stuff, and it's happening in a day. Lord have mercy. What kept people bound for years, wicked systems for years, are being undone, are being undone. That's what a fast does that God has called. He said, the fast that I have called undoes, it undoes the bands of wickedness. Mm. My God. That we might, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, write this down. All the promises of God are received by faith. Write that down. All the promises of God are received by faith. Love you too, man of God. Blessings. Blessings. Good. Pray that you have a blessed day. Father, we thank you for Tara and the seed she has just sown. Now, according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11, bless her a thousand times more in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me put this together by the Holy Spirit. Go with me to verse 29. We're closing. Go with me. Verse 29. We're closing. Galatians 3 and 29. Thank you, Tasha. All of the promises of God are received by faith. My God. All by faith. That's a whole nother story. If you get the book that God had me write on faith, you'll see how important faith is. Everything is received by faith. You are saved through faith. Yes. You overcome by faith. You fight by faith. My God, you quench the fiery darts of the wicked one by faith. My God. Let's put this together, Holy Ghost. Galatians 3, 29. If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you be Christ. Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That is your link. That is your link. And just like this woman was a daughter of Abraham, because you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs of the promise. Guess what? Just like it was her right to be healed, it is your right to be healed. It is your right to be free. It is your right to be delivered. Why? Because you are Abraham's seed through Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for putting it together. Did you see that, Lenore? Did you see how the Holy Ghost tied it together? We were talking from Luke 13 that she was a daughter of Abraham, but do you see how Galatians ties you into Abraham. Galatians ties you into Abraham, Tara, because you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And just like she had a right to be healed and a right to be free, you have a right to be healed and a right to be free. So I decree and declare over you, be healed, be free, be delivered. 
My God, tap that screen as we close out. Tap that screen as we close out. Lord, have mercy. I don't know how I was able to stand still. I'm telling you, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit all over me. Father, I pray that you open your, your people, your sons and daughters, open their eyes to what is taking place, to the reality of what is happening, how you are working mightily, how you are working supernaturally, how you are working immediately, how you are working suddenly in the lives of of the people, in the lives of people all over this world. And Father, we hold fast to those five expectations, and we thank you for keeping us these 15 days. Father, we thank you for Kiana and the seed she just sowed. We now pray according to Deuteronomy 1 and 11 that you bless her a thousand times more. Hallelujah. My God. To you be glory. To you be glory. Well, I pray that you all have been blessed through this word this morning. If you were blessed, say blessed. If you were encouraged, say encouraged. If you were enlightened, say enlightened. My God, I don't know about you, but the Holy Ghost reveals so much stuff. My God, the Holy Ghost reveals so much stuff. He empowers us. Bless you, sir. To God be the glory. Thank you. Let me know how everything is going with your notary. I want to connect you to a title company. I want to connect you to a title company. They do a lot of uh, they do a lot of loans and mortgages in Orlando area. Okay? I want to connect you to a title company that does a lot of uh, loans in that area. Hallelujah. My God, you are wonderful. All right, so you be encouraged. We got 15 more days, 15 more days in the consecration. Somebody put up their capital letters. I am expecting great things. Come on. Somebody put up their I am expecting great things. Regina, I am expecting great things. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, it's already done. That's a, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. My God. Good. Good. Excellent. 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 Good. Yeah. Excellent. All you got to do now, once God connects you to the right title companies, they'll keep you working. You set your fee. I'll talk to you more about it. I'm expecting great things for you, Aisha. I'm expecting big things for you, Dina. I'm expecting great things for you, Rosa. I'm expecting great things for you, Lenore. Big things. My God, you serve a big God. You serve Tara. I'm expecting great things for you. My God, I pray Gilead on you. The word Gilead means heaps of testimonies. Heaps of te Good, Lenore. My God, big things. Great things. We serve a great God, greatly to be praised. My God. All right. Well, remember, do something today. Number one, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, walk in righteousness. Number five, awake to righteousness. Number six, expect divine intervention. Number seven, be fruitful. Number eight, multiply. Number nine, replenish. Number 10, subdue. Number 11, stay connected to God. Number 12, get a revelation of who God is. My God. Hallelujah. And number 13, you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be free. You are a covenant person. You are the seed of Abraham. You are heirs of the promise. You are a kingdom citizen. And because you are a kingdom citizen, the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. I think I'm going to come up with a song. I dare you to sing this song every day. The king is responsible for my welfare and well-being. 
My God, the king is responsible for my welfare and well-being. The king is responsible for my welfare and well-being. Say goodbye to welfare because the king is responsible for your well-being and welfare. My God, that just hum that to yourself over and over and over again. Remind yourself the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. I don't care if you are a single parent. The king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. I don't care if you're married. The king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. My God, I don't care if you're on public assistance. The king is responsible. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Turn up the mic a little. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you for that mic. The king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. Lord, have mercy. Remind yourself today. You have a productive day today. You have a fruitful day. We love you all. Shalom. There is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Once again, go to the website. Go to the Cash App. If you desire to give, you can always give. If you desire to give, thank you for all of you who have sown this morning, those of you who will sow after this is over, those of you who will sow later, we give you an opportunity. Remember, the king is responsible for your welfare and well-being. Don't limit yourself through your job. Don't limit yourself through your 401k. Don't limit yourself through your income. Don't limit yourself through your stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. All of that is rubbish compared to what the king has. How do you know what the king has? Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's. My God, the earth is the Lord's. My God, somebody need to hear me this morning. You need to know what the king has. You are bragging about your $100,000 a year job, but you need to know what the king has. The earth is is the Lord's. Lord have mercy. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they, Lord have mercy, that dwell within it. Did you hear the scripture? Put that scripture down, please. Psalms 24 and 1. Meditate on that scripture today, Lenore. Meditate on that scripture today, Rosa, Ruth. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. That means everything in it. The world and they that dwell therein. That means God owns the earth. He owns everything in it. The gold, the silver, the platinum, the diamonds, the rubies. He owns everything in it. He owns everything on it. That means at any time he can speak to somebody to bless you. My God, I believe and I receive, good God Almighty. Did you hear me? Did you hear me, Sonia? Hallelujah. Did you hear that, Sonia? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God is putting you on the mind of those who have your increase. That's all God has to do. He just say, Lord, turn the home, turn the property over to D. Arthur. That's it. See, the king owns everything in his domain. The earth is the Lord. That's his domain. He owns everything in the domain. He could have someone give you a franchise, Lenore. He could have someone give you a franchise. Yes, Lord, I heard it. Go into it now. He could have someone give you a franchise. He can have you... Someone give you a house. I told you about the lady who was working as a nanny. She was working as a nanny in the house. She was cleaning the house. And she was getting frustrated. She says, I'm tired of doing this. This is hard work. I'm tired of doing this. Her boss told her, I need you to prepare this house. I need a good cleaning because I'm about to sell it. The lady 
was cleaning the house and the lady was complaining. Now that once I finish cleaning this house, I will be out of a job. She was complaining the whole time. I'll be out of a job. She went from complaining over the job to saying she'll be out of a job. She did not know that the king had turned the heart of her boss. And when it came time, he came to her. He said, is everything finished? She said, yes. He said, it looks good. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you for serving me all of these years. And she was sad. She said, but what am I, what am I going to do now that you're selling this home? He said, ma'am, you did not know it, but you were cleaning your own home. Here are the keys to your debt-free home. I'm telling you, God will show up and God will show out. All God has to do is turn the person's heart in your favor. And I decree and declare that God is turning people's heart in your favor. Tara, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Mona Lisa, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Lenore, Rosa, Deartha, Michelle, Kiana, Kadia, Felicia, Mona Lisa, Aisha, Regina, Dina, Evangelist Bryant, Michael, Anthony, June, Lois, Wendy, Lisa, Jennifer. The, the Lord is turning people's heart in your favor. Good God Almighty. I got to leave. Lord have mercy. But I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. My God, Ruth, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Tara, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Glory, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Chaplain Pope, Minister Terrell, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Wendy, James, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Tasha, Sam, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Lord, have mercy. Valerie, Willie, Tempest, Tina, God is turning. Tempest, God is turning people's heart in your favor. Well, once again, we want to thank you for coming on and being with us. Hallelujah. Remember, you are valuable and you are necessary to the king. Shalom. Blessings to you all. Have an awesome day.